everybody! In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a very basic floppy fish game where you're trying to get the fish through the pipes without crashing. So let's go ahead and get started. Click on File, New, and we're going to go ahead and give our project a title. I'm going to make a floppy fish, but obviously you can make it whatever you want. Go ahead and delete the cat sprite, and let's work on our backdrop by clicking on Backdrop. Go to the Backdrops tab. We're going to start by making the, the ocean and the ground, or the sky and the ground, if you want to make Flappy Bird. I'm going to go ahead and pick like a blue color. Turn off outline. We don't want that black outline. And then we're going to use the square button. Make sure you are in vector mode and not bitmap mode. So there we go. And then click and drag. And we are going to fill the sky. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so that I can see how large this thing is. Perfect. Leave a little space for the ground. Now let's go ahead and make the ground. So now we're going to click the color button, maybe choose like a brownish color. That's pretty good. Then go back to the rectangle button. We're going to drag and make the ground. And there we go. All right. Once you do that, Let's go ahead and start working on making our sprite. So first, I need a fish. So I'm going to hover over here, and I'm just going to choose the basic fish sprite in here. Sorry. You don't have to choose a fish. Again, if you want to like choose a shark or whatever, maybe I'll choose a shark this time. I'm going to choose a shark. Um, you can. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the pipes. So to do that, we're going to make the pipes a sprite. So go ahead and hover over our sprite, go to the paintbrush tool, and we're going to go ahead and create the pipes in here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so I can see the whole canvas. Go ahead and select a color for the pipes. I'm going to make mine like a reddish color here. Okay, then choose the rectangle tool, and I want you to create a very long column stretching from top to bottom like this. Okay, and to make the pipes look interesting, let's go ahead and use this line tool. Actually, this line tool doesn't work in vector mode, so we're going to have to go to bitmap mode. So go ahead and click on bitmap mode, click on the line tool, and we're going to draw some lines going up and down so it kind of looks more like a, like a pipe, right? So I'm going to choose a color that's uh, similar, but maybe a different shade. There we go. And then we're going to use line tool to kind of draw in those lines. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just adding a little bit of detail to the to this, and it's going to make it look a little bit more interesting than what we have here. All right, perfect. Um, and then I want you to use this tool, the crop tool, to kind of cut out the middle section here. So we need a little gap. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag my mouse around here and I'm just going to cut out a little centerpiece like this. I'm just going to hit delete and it's going to make a little gap there. Perfect. I'm going to go back to vector mode and I'm going to select this and I want you to notice how in the screen you can see the pipes are kind of like sitting on top of the ground which is good but I want this to be bigger than what it looks like so I'm just going to stretch this out like this. Okay. Um, just so it has a much bigger column here because later on this thing is going to move up and down and you want this space to be moving up and down with it. And we don't want it to look like it's floating in the air. Okay, the finishing touches. We need to kind of add like a little end piece to this, this uh, column here. So you're going to go back to vector mode. Click on the rectangle tool. I'm going to go ahead and use the eyedropper here to pick the same color as this. All right, make sure outline's off, and we're going to just draw in the end pieces to this by just dragging this. I'm going to make a copy of this by clicking on it. Okay, remember how we did this in the other one? Copy and paste, and we can drag that over here so it matches. It's perfect. And there we go. We have our basic flappy fish column, and you can always adjust 
you know, the location of these squares, if you, if you feel like there's not enough space for the fish to go through. You don't want it to be too narrow because it's going to be really difficult. Um, but you also don't want it to be too, to be too wide. Otherwise, it's going to be too easy, right? So that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to code the fish. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the, the shark. Okay, I'm going to go back to code. And then we're going to start with an events button. So go to events, drag the green flag here. We're going to make two variables. So let's go to variables and I want you to click the first variable and it's going to be called score. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and press OK. And we're going to need another variable. And this variable is going to be called speed. So go ahead and um, go ahead and make speed. And we're going to press OK. And I'm going to uncheck speed so that it doesn't show up here. All right, so let's go ahead and drag this set variable to zero here. We're going to set the score to zero when the flag is clicked. We're also going to set the speed to zero. So go ahead and drag another one of these blocks and put speed. Then we're going to go to the size button, we want this, this shark is a little bit too big. So we're gonna go to looks and I want you to click on set size to 100%. Go ahead and set this to like 50%. You can go ahead and check and see if that's a good size. I set it to 50. If it's too small, you can always up it depending on how your pipes are looking. Um, you can always adjust it. And then we're gonna go ahead and use the motion block. And we're going to set this uh, fish to begin in this starting position. So let's go ahead and click on the go to X, Y, and we're gonna set it to, uh, let's see, we want it to start kind of back here. And you can see as I drag this sprite, it's changing the X and Y value, right? So I'm gonna enter that same X and Y value, negative 119, and the Y is 27. There we go. So we'll start back here. Um, now we're going to go ahead and code um, the dropping motion of this, of this fish. So there is a change Y by, you see this block here? We're going to go ahead and drag this change Y by block, put it here. And instead of 10, we're going to go ahead and get our variable and drag the speed variable and drop it into here. So we're going to change the Y by speed. And then we're also going to drag this change variable by block, put it here. And we're going to change the speed by negative 0.2. And the negative 0.2 is basically it's, you know, in Flappy Bird, it, it eventually goes down, 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 right? So it's basically telling the sprite to continue to go down um, as you press this green flag. Now we want this going down motion to repeat, right? So we're going to drag a control repeat block, um, drag a repeat until block and snap it around these change Y and change speed blocks. And we're going to make this dropping repeat until it's touching one of these, um, the edge of this pipe, right? And we want the game to stop. So let's go ahead and go to sensing, drag a touching color block, click on the color and we're going to get the eyedropper. Let's get that red color. And we're going to basically tell the computer, you're going to keep this fish. It's going to keep going down, this down, down, down until it's touching this red color. And when it touches this red color, um, maybe you can add like a sound effect. I'm going to go ahead and add like a, I don't know. I'm going to add a sound effect. Like I'll add this. Looping, or maybe a bonk. I'm going to add this bonk sound. Okay, so we're going to go to sound, drag the play song bonk until done, and you're going to have the fish play that sound if it touches this red color, like it bumped into something. Okay, so we need to add a little bit more code. We want this fish to bump up when we press the space bar, right? So we're going to go to events, grab the one space key pressed, and then we're going to go back to that variable 
and we're going to drag the change my variable block and we're going to change the speed by seven. So notice when you press the space bar, it's increasing the speed by a positive number, but when you don't press the space bar, the speed is changing by negative 0.2. So it's gonna gradually go down, 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 right? Um, so we maybe we also want to add a sound as we press the space bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and add um, the start sound block here. Obviously, I don't want to play the bonking sound. I might go ahead and play the water drop sound. Let's hear what that sounds like. Yeah, that's good. So we're going to play this sound as we press the space bar, right? Okay. So let's test this code. I'm going to go ahead and press this. You can see, oop, it is dropping down as we speak, but if I press the space bar, it's jumping up and it's making that water drop sound. So perfect. Now, a fun way to adjust this is to change the speed and also change the speed it drops. If you change these numbers, you're going to notice a big difference with the controls. Sometimes you might notice the controls are not as, as smooth as you want them. So one way to adjust them is to change these numbers here. Okay, and you can adjust the bounce and how quickly they drop. Now we are moving on to the final step. The final step is to code these pipes to kind of move forward and to also go adjust up and down so it gives the player a little bit more of a challenge, right? So let's go ahead and go to Sprite 1. Well, Sprite 1, I'm going to rename it and it's going to be called Pipes. Okay, it's always a good idea to rename your sprites to what they actually are. So go ahead and go to events, drag the green flag button, and then we're going to go ahead and get the go to X and Y position block and snap it on. If you want to readjust the size of these pipes, you can always adjust the size here. I'm just going to keep mine this size because I like it, but you can always adjust the size as well. Okay, so we want this to start at a position. Let's go ahead and set the X position to 240. And we're gonna set the Y position to a random position. So right now it says negative 178, but we're gonna delete that. And what I want us to use is an operator. So go to the green, go to operators, grab the pick random block and drop it in there. Okay, so basically this block is going to tell the computer to pick a random number between whatever two numbers you put in here. We're going to pick a range. Okay, let's make it a negative number, negative 20 to 60. Now, I just wanted to remind you of the X and Y axis here, right? The X axis and the Y axis, the further down you go, the negative, more negative it is. The further up you go, the more positive it is in the Y axis, right? We're looking at Y. So we're going to give it a number negative 20 to 60, and that's going to make this pipe move at a random place up or down, and it's going to adjust the location of this little gap, and it's going to make it interesting for the player. Okay, so we want this pipe to move in this direction, right? So we're going to be adding a move block. So go ahead and go to the motion, and I want you to grab this move steps block, and we're gonna go ahead and put negative two. And basically this is telling the computer, we want you to move in the negative two direction. So it's gonna go negative, so it's gonna go this way, right? Now, um, we we want it to go, right? Let's Let's test it out here. And you can see it's barely moving, right? And that's because we have not added any repeat blocks. But let's keep coding. Now, let's go ahead and get an if then block. So if these pipes reach the edge over here, we want it to start over and make it look like the, the pipes are never ending, right? So we're going to get another operator and we're gonna grab the blank less than 50 sign. Pop it into there. Now, let's grab the go to the motion and I want you to get the x position block here and pop it into the first section. 
and then I want you to change this number to negative 230. Okay, so basically the position all the way over here is actually negative 220. So basically it's telling the computer if this pipe's x position is all the way over here, less than negative 230, then we're going to go back to x240 and y pick a random number. So we're going to repeat this block here. So go ahead and grab another x. Go to x, y block here. We're going to make the first blank 240. And we're going to do the same thing here. Pick a random number between negative 20 and 60. OK. All right. We also want to give people points if they pass through the, the pipes, right? So we're going to go ahead and uh, add a score block here. Go ahead and click on the variables. Go ahead and click on change variable by. And instead of variable, we're going to say change score by one. So basically, if these pipes go all the way this way without being uh, crashed into by the shark, then you're going to change the score by one. And let's actually add a sound effect. I want to add a bubble sound effect. So I'm going to go here to the sound panel. I'm going to search up bubbles. There we go. And then I can add my code. I'm going to say start sound bubbles. Okay. One last thing we need to do. We want this to repeat right? You saw that when I click this, this is on, it's just stuck there. That's because the computer read the code once and then it stopped. So let's go ahead and add the control repeat block. We're going to get the repeat until, and we're going to put it around the moving negative two steps block. And we're going to go ahead and repeat this until this shark touches the, the pipes, right? Because if it does touch the, the pipes, then the game will stop. So let's go to um, sensing. You're going to grab the touching mouse pointer block, except you're going to uh, click this and you're going to pick the shark. So now let's test this. I'm going to stop it, start it. You can see here, there's my shark. Oops. OK, and when I hit it, it said bonk and it stopped. So that's perfect. Um, you may have noticed as I was playing, when I jump up, it's going up. Oh, it's glitching. There we go. If you don't like the way that the shark is jumping up and down and you want to change how fast it drops, again, you're going to go to shark. You're going to adjust these speed numbers here and play around with it and see how it works. But that's the basics. Um, have fun with this. There are so many ways to mod this and make it more interesting. You might want to add more levels, maybe some things to collect. Um, you can also uh, change the speed or add a background, more interesting. Lots and lots of ways you can make a new mod of this game. So have fun with this. I can't wait to see what you come up with. And good luck. Thanks.